Hey, good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, world. Happy Memorial Day as we pay honor and tribute for those who served in our country and gave their life. I wasn't going to get on today for this morning medicine. I know everybody got their day off, but I gave you a little bit of time to sleep in this morning. But regardless of a day off, the enemy don't take a day off. So I know it's a necessity for this medicine. So I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready for me some morning medicine. Today's prescription comes from Proverbs chapter 29, verse 14. Look something I was thinking about this morning as I'm up meditating. The scripture says, the king who judges the poor with truth, his throne will be established forever. Good morning, good morning. The king who judges poor with truth, his throne will be established forever. So let me, let me just make this and just say this before we even started. God wants to establish us on earth in preparation for heaven. God establishes us on earth in preparation for heaven. So we are being established on earth as we are preparing for heaven. In other words, God has a purpose for us here on earth as he prepares us to get ready for heaven. I say all of that because the scripture here this morning says, the person who judges the poor with truth, his throne will be established forever. His throne will be established forever. And God speaks of this establishing forever, but first he has requirements before we even get established. There's specific understandings that God is pointing out in order for our thrones to be established forever. A throne, I want you to think of a throne like this for our morning medicine. A throne is whatever God has his vessel. Let me repeat that. A throne is wherever God has his vessel. So rather be at your job, that's the throne that God has have you at. Rather be at your house, that's the throne that God has you at. If it's in your car, that's the throne that God has you at. Whatever the vessel is, that's where the throne is. Whatever the vessel is, that's where the throne is established. Why? Because you're there. And if you're you're there, the Bible says he that is in us. So if God is within us, that means his presence is there. And if his presence is there, that means his throne is there. You can't separate that. Because we carry the glory of God. And carrying the glory of God means wherever we go, that means his presence is there. That means God's throne has the opportunity to be established. Because we are there. I want us to start thinking like that as we approach each and every day. Can God establish his throne where his vessel is? Can God establish his throne where his vessel sits? Can God establish his throne where his vessel operates? Is God throne established when it comes to you? I want us to think about that and meditate on that as I was thinking about that this morning. And one of the ways that God had me to speak on this morning of establishing his throne is us being able to judge righteously. I know many people say, oh man, we're not supposed to judge, but yet the Bible says to judge righteously righteously. We can't forget about that word. Jesus points out judging, but he says, judge righteously. The problem is not the fact of judging. The fact is, the problem is we don't judge righteously. We don't, we look at everyone else issues, but yet never want to look at our own issues. So we are to judge each other, holding each other accountable on earth and God will deal with the eternal judgment in heaven. 
We don't have nothing to do with eternal judgment. I can't put anybody in hell, but yet I can keep you by judging you and don't want you to go to hell. So when God speaks about this judging, let's talk about judging righteously because in God's throne, judging righteously comes from it. So we as vessels must judge righteously. So one aspect of judging righteously is that it always comes with truth. And for our morning medicine this morning, I want us to understand that truth is not biased. We can't be afraid to speak truth. Let me even be more specific about that. We can't be afraid to speak God's truth. Because we can speak our truth and that could be a lie. When I speak about truth, I'm talking about God's truth. I'm holding you accountable based on God's truth. It is his word that is judging, holding accountable and convicting. But the, but the thing I want to highlight is that we have to get out of this place of being biased when it comes to giving out truth. When it comes to giving out judging righteously, we got to stop being biased because in truth, there is no bias. What do I mean by that? When we sometimes categorize people and depending on the person determines if I am willing to give them truth or not, or how in the how and what manner I'm willing to give it. For example, if I, I like this person, sometimes I don't want to give them because I want them to continue to like me. So then I'll water down the truth. Or when I look at someone's situation or predicament, I'm more likely to excuse it. Well, you know what, man? Look at look at where they're from. Look at how they were raised, man. Come on, man. Ah, man, you know, I, I, I'm going to water it down a little bit because, you know, they already have enough. What I'm trying to tell you is the Bible here says a king judges the poor with truth. And when you talk about the poor, sometimes you can look at a situation and not give them true judgment. You're not giving them what they actually need to hear. And sometimes we do that because a person is deemed lacking a person is deemed this or that and therefore i'm not going to give them what they really need to hear i'm going to water it down a little bit but the watering down a little bit does not help them it actually hurts them because we're choosing not to judge righteously we're true we're choosing to be biased with the truth and if jesus says in the book of john that the truth shall set us free and i'm not willing to give them the truth then guess what? I'm not helping them to be set free. I'm actually helping them to stay in bondage. So what I'm saying is that we have to stop being biased when it comes with truth. If we are vessels of God, then we have to allow God to lead us when it comes to truth. Remember, it's his truth, not my truth. And sometimes I want to dress it up the way that I want to dress it up based on my understanding of a person. No, how is God telling me to give it? God is not telling me to water down that truth. God is not telling me uh, to hold back or some of these things. What I, what I need to see, or I need to do is, I need to seek the Lord and give it the way the Lord is calling me to give it. We can't already come up with this determination in our minds that I'm not going to give it based on, well, you know what? I told him that yesterday, so I'm not going to give it, I'm not going to give it that to him today. You know what, man? I don't want them to feel some type of way. So you know what? I, I, I'm only going to give them half a truth. You know what? Hey, hey, man, that person is it, a worthless anyway. That person ain't trying to hear nothing. That person's an unbeliever. I, I'm not even, I'm not even going to waste my time. You know what? I, I just, I just give them a little bit of it. Or 
I'm not going to say anything unless they say something and let them not say nothing. Then we never give truth at all. The Bible says, no, it doesn't work like that. And what God is trying to have us understand is the significance of giving truth the way that God wants me to give the truth. I can't get caught up in how that person will respond or won't respond. I can't get caught up in uh, trying to somehow put it in a way that they somehow receive it. Let me tell you something about truth. It's not me that gives the increase anyway. God tells us just to plant a water. God says he give the increase. But God says, don't mess up the planting and watering. You just let me give the increase. And what I'm saying this morning is we got to stop being biased when it comes to truth. Am I saying go out there and yell it? Am I saying go out there and cuss them out with it? No, I'm not saying that. I'm, <laughs> I'm saying when Jesus delivered truth, we need to follow his example. And sometimes some of those truths were harsh from my understanding. Jesus called the Jesus called the Pharisees sometimes brutal vipers. And what he was giving them was an understanding that vipers killed their young. When you look at snakes, the vipers and those venomous snakes, some of them eat their young. And I'm just saying there's a lot of correlation why God called them a brood of vipers. But that in itself was a very, very harsh statement when it, when it's looked through, through our lens. He also called them whitewashed tombs. He called them hypocrites. Nowadays, if I call somebody a hypocrite, people would get on me. And I'm saying not to call somebody a hypocrite just be calling them a hypocrite. What I am saying is it's matching the actions of their character. And I'm not saying that to down them, but I'm actually saying that to illuminate something, to bring them up to the level that God is calling them to be. But I got to take out my bias of giving truth and come to the understanding to give it how God wants me to give it. God never gives the truth in vain or give the truth to make somebody else feel bad or make somebody else uh, feel like I'm better than them. No, no, that's not the aim. The aim of truth is to set one free. So when the Bible says the king who judges the poor with truth, I'm trying to make the poor rich. As I'm trying to make somebody who think they're too rich, poor. Matthew chapter five, blessed are the poor in spirit. But we got to take away us with our biases of truth. Because all we need to be concerned about is how God is asking me to give it. And the responsibility of me to give it. That's the part. Let God take care of the rest. Let's take and remove our biases. Well, you know what? That person is this. That person is that. No, no, no. God didn't ask you all of that. We need to look at it through the lens of God and give it the way God wants me to give it. Let's take out us trying to figure out what's the best way to package that thing. What's the best way? No, no. Just give them truth. Not the truth that you want to give or how you want to give it. Because sometimes we want to give truth and we want to embarrass people. We want to we want to say it to make them look shamed. Check your heart in that. The intentions is wrong. So that truth is not God's truth is presented in your truth. And that's why Jesus, every time that Jesus gave truth, his intent was to bring them up to the place that he was trying to establish them. If God is, he's God established a throne with us, then trust and believe he wants to establish a throne with others. But yet I have to be the vessel to bring that truth in order that they may be set free. We can't afford to continue to overthink this thing. We can't afford to continue to underthink this thing. But what we can afford is, God, I'm just going and doing what you're calling me to do. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to 
learn all these words in the dictionary to somehow sound more eloquent. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians that Paul didn't come with eloquent words. He just came with the truth. And he said in that truth, he allowed the power of God to be displayed. So for our morning medicine this morning, let's get away from this truth being biased. Yeah, I got it. Trust me. I, I understand their situation. But I want you to ask yourself this question. Why would God give you that truth? Does he not understand their situation? Does he not understand some of the things that they're going through? Does God not see it? Does God not have more care for them than you? So if that's the case, then why do I keep trying to be biased with the truth? It doesn't matter about a person's status. It doesn't matter about a person's reputation. It doesn't matter about a person's title. It doesn't matter about a person's disposition. It doesn't matter about uh, where a person is based on my perspective. What's God's perspective? And I know one thing, that person deserves God's truth. Not in the way that I want to give it, but in the way that God's calling me to give it. Let's not water it down before it even gets there. I'll stop the ability from them being set free. This is your morning medicine. We can't afford to be biased with the truth. As God establishes a throne with me, let him use me to establish a throne with others. Speak the truth. No more bias. God bless you all.